Okay, so welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. Today, we're going to be talking about Jamaica. Okay. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at crime there. Interesting. Yeah, it should be um, a really fascinating look into what's going on. So we've got a bunch of different sources for this one. We've got some news articles. Uh -huh. We've got opinion pieces, all sorts of stuff. And it seems like crime is really what everyone is talking about. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, it's yeah. a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big deal, and there's a lot of kind of political back and forth going on around it. So it should be interesting to sort of unpack that. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I found really interesting right off the bat was that there was this poll that was done recently. Okay. And almost half of Jamaicans said that crime and violence were the biggest problems facing the country. Wow, that's a huge number. Yeah. 48.3%, hmm. which is, you know, more than just a statistic, I think. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that kind of a number really reflects a deep sense of, like, unease. Yeah. You know, even maybe fear in a big chunk of the population. Totally. Yeah. And, and you know, it wasn't the only thing that people were concerned about. But, right. but it was definitely the top thing. So, for example, the high cost of living came in second okay. at 15.1%. It's interesting to see those two at the top of the list, you know, yeah. because a lot of yeah. times those two kind of go hand in hand. They do. You know, when the economy is struggling, it can really drive up crime. Totally. And then when crime gets bad, it can hurt the economy even more. Yeah, it's like a vicious cycle. Exactly. So let's um, let's kind of move into some of the political stuff because, mm -hmm. like I said, there's, there's some interesting back and forth going on. Okay. The opposition leader, Mark Golding, he's from the People's National Party or the PNP. Mm hmm he basically came out and said that the government has had eight years of failure on crime. Wow. So he's I mean, not pulling any punches. No, he's not. I mean, it makes sense, though, if that many people are saying that crime is the number one issue, uh -huh. you know, politicians have to address it. For sure. And sometimes that means pointing fingers. Uh, yeah, and, and and the prime minister did not like that very much. Yeah. Um, he, he basically called Golding's accusations pathetic. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like, this is just a pathetic attempt to shift blame. I mean, yeah, that's classic politics, isn't it? Yeah. When something becomes a big problem, everyone wants to make sure that it's not their fault. Right. Well, he didn't stop there. He actually went on to suggest that the PNP was actually to blame for, like, a breakdown in the relationship between citizens and the police. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he even said that they have sown seeds of discord between the police and the people they are sworn to serve. That's a pretty serious accusation. It is, yeah. He's basically saying that, that the cool. PMP has made it harder to fight crime because they've damaged the relationship between the police and the community. I mean, whether it's true or not, it definitely raises questions about, you know, trust between law enforcement and the people. Yeah. So I, so in the midst of all this, yeah. you know, finger pointing, what is the PNP actually proposing? Right. Good question. Golding says that they have a plan for citizen security. And he says that. Yeah. Their approach is going to be bottom-up, not top-down. Interesting. He's emphasizing community partnerships right. and empowerment. So it sounds like there are these two very different approaches. Yeah. You know, you've got the prime minister who seems to be focused on like a more traditional law and order approach. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Golding who's talking about community engagement right. and empowerment. It's like two totally different philosophies He's about so how to address crime. Yeah. So it's a really interesting situation, right? Yeah. Like you've got this nation grappling with crime, anxieties are running high, yeah. and the politicians are kind of battling it out. It makes you wonder what it's like for the average person, you know, just trying to live their life yeah. in Jamaica right now. Yeah, stuck in the middle. Well, that leads us perfectly to the final thought that we wanted to leave you with today. So we've talked about a lot of different stuff. We've talked about the crime rates. We've talked about the political back and forth. We've talked about some of the proposed solutions. So now we want to hear from you. What do you think is the most effective way to combat crime in a society like Jamaica? Is it all about just having really tough law enforcement? Or is it more about these community decks? Ooh. Things are getting heated over there. Definitely. We've got some excerpts from a recent news article that really lays out the tension okay. between the prime minister and the opposition leader. Yeah. So we're going to jump right in. Sounds good. For those of you who have been following the situation, mm -hmm. you'll know that the prime minister has come out swinging. Oh, yeah and accused the opposition party, the PNP, right. of basically using crime for political gain. It's a big accusation. It is a big accusation. Yeah. The article quotes him directly saying, okay. um, they use whatever happens in the society, wow. even if it's criminal, mm -hmm. for their political benefit. And that, my friend, is PNPism. Strong words. 
Strong words. And what's really interesting is he ties this accusation directly okay. to the PMP stance against states of emergency. Right. And that adds a whole other layer to this right. because states of emergency in Jamaica are a really controversial topic. Oh, definitely. Can you give us a bit more context on that? Sure. So basically in Jamaica, states of emergency give the government okay. a lot more power in terms of security. Mm. They can detain people without charges. Wow. Increase police presence in certain areas. Oh, I see. Conduct searches without warrants. All sorts of things. And this is all in the name of combating crime. Exactly. It's meant to be a tool to deal with really serious situations. Yeah. But obviously there are big concerns about civil liberties. Right. So you have some people saying it's necessary to keep people safe and others saying it's a step too far. Absolutely. And that's where the PNP comes in. Okay. They've been very vocal in their opposition to states of emergency. Interesting. They argue that they're ineffective mm -hmm. and they infringe on people's basic rights. So by linking this stance to his accusation of embracing criminality, mm -hmm. the prime minister is really upping the ante. He is. And it's a risky move. It could backfire. Well, it could alienate people who are concerned about the government overreaching. Okay. It could also make it harder to find common ground on actually addressing crime. Right, because now it's become this highly politicized issue. Exactly. And as you can imagine, the opposition leader yeah. did not take this lying down. Oh, of course not. He called the prime minister okay. desperate and unhinged. Ooh. And he basically said okay. that this is all a smokescreen to distract from the government's own failures. Classic deflection tactic. So is there any truth to that? Well, the opposition leader claims that the government hasn't done enough okay. to address the root causes of crime. Like what kind of things? Things like poverty, lack of opportunity, social inequality. Right. He's saying they're focusing too much on these short-term measures. Like states of emergency? Yeah. And not enough on long-term solutions. It's a common argument from opposition parties all over the world. Yeah. They're always trying to paint the government as ineffective mm. and out of touch. But is there any evidence to support this? Well, the article doesn't get into specifics, Okay. but it does mention that crime rates have been rising in Jamaica. Hmm. So that would seem to support the opposition leader's point to some extent. It would, but it's important to remember that crime is a complex issue. Right. There's no easy fix. No silver bullet. Exactly. So what are some of the key questions we should be asking? Well, first off, what specific evidence is there to support the prime minister's claim? Okay. Is it just based on the PMP's stance on states of emergency? Mm. Or is there something more concrete? Right. And on the other side, what specific policies is the opposition leader proposing? Okay. And how would those policies actually address the root causes of crime? Those are great questions. And I think it's also important to consider the potential impact mm. of this kind of rhetoric. Definitely. How could this affect public perception of both parties? It's hard to say for sure, but this kind of heated back and forth yeah. could further polarize public opinion. People who already support the prime minister might become even more entrenched in their views. Right. And the same goes for supporters of the opposition leader. But what about people who are undecided? That's the key group to watch. Right. They could be turned off by this kind of negativity. And they might just tune out altogether. Exactly. So what are some of the things we should be looking for as this story develops? Well, keep an eye on how both sides respond to these accusations. Okay. Do they provide any evidence to back up their claims? Mm -hmm. Or do they just keep slinging mud? And I think it's also crucial to pay attention to the historical context here. Oh, absolutely. Because back in the 80s and 90s, yeah. political violence was a real problem in Jamaica. It was. And it was often linked to accusations of parties using criminal elements. Right. So this history adds a whole other layer of complexity to the current situation. It does. And it's a reminder that words can have real consequences. Exactly. So as we continue to follow this story, we need to be mindful of that. We need to think critically about what we're hearing, mm. and we need to consider the potential impact on everyday Jamaicans. Absolutely. And remember that this is just one perspective on a very complex issue. Right. There are many other voices and viewpoints out there. So do your own research, stay informed, and think for yourself. That's the best advice anyone can give. Well said. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you to all our listeners for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.